Hey, everything's going great. Happy Friday. How are you all? Great. Tell the people great, about great. yourself, please. Hi, yay. I am um, product marketing manager. I've been working on SageMaker for four years, so I feel passionate about SageMaker. And one of the best things in the job is uh, people who might not have heard about machine learning or generative AI are finally excited for me to talk about my my job with them. <laughs> so my, I'm really, really um, excited to be in SageMaker, and it's been a, a, a flagship service for developers, data scientists, ML engineers who are building, training, and deploying their own machine learning models. And it's been really fun to work with customers like St Stability AI, AI21 Labs, TII, so many of the foundation models there uh, that are out there today. Uh, customers have been using SageMaker and AWS infrastructure to build them. So it's just really been a fun journey to be a part of the SageMaker team. That's amazing. Now I gotta I gotta pause this here for just a second because uh, you know we've had we've had people coming and going throughout the day on the stream. If you're just joining us, welcome to AWS On Air. We've been talking AI ML all day, and that's what we're going to be talking about. We're here with Kimberly, who's going to be talking through SageMaker with us. Um, we've got chat open. Brian and I are checking chat. Uh, we are taking your questions. I see a bunch of people in here. Uh, I've I, I got to call it Janice Q. Janice Q has been watching me since probably 2018. Uh, I've been hanging out with, with Janice Q. He's actually making an inside joke back to a show that I did in 2018, which is amazing. Uh, I had to call that out. Uh, we, we are watching chat. We've got chat pulled up. Uh, you know, we're here. Happy that you're learning with us. Uh, Agents was really cool. All right, Kimberly, on to SageMaker. I just had to had to let everybody know if they were just joining us, what they were watching. Uh, yeah, so sure. uh, I'll, I'll tell you one of my favorite things that, that really, so I'm not an ML engineer in any respects, not even, I don't even pretend. Uh, but one of the first times that I got really, really excited about SageMaker was with SageMaker Jumpstart. Uh, because it made people like me uh, very easy to access uh, models within SageMaker without having to know a ton, uh, which has been really cool. But do you want to give us just some, uh, there's a lot to SageMaker, right? Like that's that's kind of the, the, uh, the thing that I don't want to have you explain every single piece of SageMaker, but uh, can you just give us kind of a rundown of some of the greatest hits when it comes to the SageMaker product yeah. line? Yeah, sure. So I do have a cheat sheet um, that I can share with you um, that I do get get work with customers on where it shows all the different components of SageMaker. Okay. And I'll talk about Jumpstart because you're right, there's been a lot of excitement at, uh, around Jumpstart. But SageMaker per started as hosted notebooks and has evolved to have a complete set of purpose-built tools for machine learning. So we launched the first IDE for machine learning, SageMaker Studio. We had the first purpose-built a pipeline service for CI/CD processing, and Jumpstart was was a first. Where Jumpstart is a hub, we call it a machine learning hub, and it has algorithms, models, pre-built solution, access to open source models from top providers like Hugging Face, uh, St Stable Diffusion. Uh, we had Llama in there, so it helps people, pun intended, jumpstart their machine learning projects. Um, and the, the biggest changes really that we've been seeing around Gen AI, we started in November at reInvent last year and throughout the year, we have made these foundation models available uh, through, your, through Jumpstart, um, through the open source foundation models. So you can grab them and then use all of the tools that we've been building over the years um, from Jumpstart and, and apply them uh, to these open source models. So things like experiment management, customization, putting them into a pipeline, um, adding them uh, to existing applications, all of that can you can use the tools that you're familiar with for SageMaker uh, to, to the jumpstart models. And yeah, expect lots more innovation and growth there. Uh, but for the, the data science practitioners, open source developers, jumpstart is your place to start and get going. And then using all the tools in SageMaker to to customize them and build them. Yeah, I uh, I actually I. There's a theme going today. I like to build in practical things. Uh, clearly, I, I used uh, SageMaker Jumpstart to to spin up a stable diffusion endpoint uh, that I was then using to generate cards for a collectible card game. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, so. I like board games, so I have to try it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played Azul. It's one of my favorites. 
No, I'm going to have to look that up after the, after the show. Okay. Um, yeah. And so then, you know, for me too, I, I really enjoyed things like uh, working with SageMaker Studio and, and Canvas. I've, I've, I've looked at Canvas a lot too. I really, I mean, to me, SageMaker is incredible because it addresses so many different groups of people that are working with data and working with ML, right? Like something like Canvas is just, you know, I'm a business analyst. I'm not necessarily working with ML. Like oh, I need to make inferences with ML, right? Can you tell us a little bit about, I, it's another one of my favorites is Canvas. I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. And I have a quick little demo that I'll show you oh. for Canvas. So we made um, announcement for Canvas two years ago now. Um, and you're right. It makes, it adds a layer on top of SageMaker no code machine learning and the advantage of this no code tool over others is all of the the code and the notebooks that you create automatically in canvas are available in studio so you can share and collaborate across data science teams and then of course with the development of large language models um, we wanted to make fm powered business insights available through canvas as well so if you missed it we announced at the end of october that the bedrock models that Namita was just talking about are available through the no code interface. Um, so you can, business analysts can, can work with them and you can also do RAG uh, as well. So I'll just go ahead and show you how this looks. Like um, what I wanna do here is I want to um, go ahead and uh, compare a couple of different um, models um, that, that we have. So I'm gonna look at the, the Titan model first that, that Namita showed. I'm just gonna type in some, some questions. Um, to, and see how the different models work. Again, I don't have to understand how they work or what they're really good at. I can just go in and start playing around. So let's ask, um, are there generative AI capabilities in SageMaker Canvas? And if so, tell me what they're about. So, so we'll see, we'll see how Titan performs putting, putting the Muta's product here. Too. Oh, Kimberly, I, 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 you're in such a good flow. I'm so sorry. You're having a little bit of audio distortion. Do you mind plugging your, uh, sure. try and plugging and unplugging? Uh, yeah, sorry, no problem. Thanks. Let's see. Okay, try it again. Yeah, can you hear me now? Is that better? Uh, it's still distorted. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. All right, so let me let me go. So let me go back. Yeah, try my my demo again. Can you can you hear it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I was, I was saying is what I was going to go, so if I'm a business analyst and I want to play around and figure out how these, um, how these models are going to work, uh, I'm just going to ask a couple questions. So I'm going to try um, asking Titan, um, how are some of the, uh, what are some of the generative AI capabilities in Canvas? Um, and I'm going to use uh, the Amazon documentation as a source and see how, uh, how it does. So yeah, the so good news is um, I got some interesting insights that yes, Canvas uh, has some generative AI capabilities. Um, and you can also see where we source the data from, which I think is, is really important, kind of lending credibility uh, to the, the analysis that we do. So we can see we pulled from documentation and you can see the capabilities that uh, generative AI has. Um, Okay, so another thing you might want to see asked is what are some of the metrics that uh, Canvas has to help you explain um, your model quality and performance? So a big thing in business analyst space is model explainability and justifying and understanding how and why models make their predictions. Um, so we're going and exploring that here. Um, and you can kind of uh, see all the different um, uh, criteria that we use to, to come up with the predictions. So you can look at things like robustness and quality, and is my model doing well, um, and how am I improving performance? And you can dive in to, to that and uh, look in more detail. I uh, I hate to be the the bearer of bad news, Kimberly. <laughs> your audio is still, <laughs> your audio is still uh, uh, very distorted. Uh, do you mind? I think our producer Nick has suggested. Uh, you know, if you have any other headphones or trying plugging the connection halfway down the wire to the control box. 
I'm not sure what that means, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, but do you have uh, do you have maybe a different set of headphones, or can you you, you try a different connection? So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we are alive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, Kimberly, well, Kimberly tries to diagnose her uh, her audio. Uh, Brian, have you have you used SageMaker at all? Um, have you? Have I use you, it. Uh, yeah, I, I may date myself. I've used it early on, like maybe three years ago. But yeah. based on this, it's changed quite a bit, you know, because I'm no AI. I mean, I'm no ML AI expert, but this looks like I can actually start using this now and do some cool yeah. things. Yeah, Canvas is incredible. I mean, Canvas is truly mm -hmm. like uh, if you've got people, uh, if you are an ML engineer, for example, and you've got people that you've been, you know, wondering, how do I get you know, them access to be able to use the models I'm building or other types of models, uh, you know, like, guess what? Canvas is your answer. Like that, that you, there's, there's very little, if any ML knowledge needed to use Canvas. I personally also have loved Studio for a long time because I'm not an ML engineer. So setting up an environment to work with ML, right? There's so many libraries out there, Brian, like Pandas and, you know, MXNet, TensorFlow, PyTorch, all these things I don't know necessarily about. Um, you know, Studio sets a lot of this stuff up for you, right? So you just go spin wow. up a Studio environment and you've got access to a, a lot of these uh, kind of ML centric types of libraries, things like that. All right. I, I don't know if Kimberly's ready yet. Uh, How about now? Oh, any, so much any better. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, fingers crossed. I don't know. <laughs> This it will stay, but fingers crossed. Yeah. So it sounds great. Thank you, Kimberly. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no worries. Um, no worries at all. So um, you were saying about how you really have been excited about Canvas um, and you've used it for your business analysis. I've also used it as well to um, in my marketing campaigns to predict if leads are going to convert in the marketing pipeline or not. So I'm able to just drag my marketing data into Canvas, and at that great case, I create a custom model. So what I'm showing here are the pre-built models um, that we have in Canvas. And I was mentioning, now we've added the bedrock models and the jumpstart models to power your business analysis. So here's the, the Claude 2, again, that Nimita showed, um, and I can use any of them uh, to build my business analysis. Oh, it's not working again, huh? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. It's yeah. Uh, you you were you were with us for a few minutes and then uh, it got distorted again. But I think this, it's coming across exactly uh, what you're what you're what you're trying to show us here is, you know, nobody had to go in and set this connection up between uh, Canvas and Bedrock. This is a uh, it's there for you to use in Canvas. That's amazing, you know. And a lot of people are asking, especially people that are are non technical or or more focused on the business side. How do I get access to these, you know, uh, these these Gen AI models that are changing the way we we do work, right? Um, and this is a great way to do it. Come into Canvas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the uh, I don't know if you can hear me now. Um, yes. I, Okay, maybe it was because I um, was was working on the demo and it caused an issue with my in internet. But the other thing I wanted to mention that is new with, with SageMaker, we were talking about all the different components, right? We have the Jupyter, hosted Jupyter Notebooks, um, distributed training, all different hosting options for the people who are really building in their own foundation models. Um, we then, we talked about Canvas and trying to show um, how now the business analysis, the pre-built models are powered by Bedrock and Jumpstart. We also have updates to Ground Truth, which is our data labeling service. Um, what you can do now is um, use a, a chat-based uh, front end into um, Ground Truth to, to, to label your data and describe what's going on um, in different scenes. So in this example, I'm showing with question and answer pairs, you can prepare demonstration data sets for, for your LLMs um, by using a, 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 this kind of Q&A chat interface. So you know, what's the story about? Then you can type in, in this case, we have a, a basketball player named Sean. You know, who are the main characters? What's the climate of the story? So these large models, uh, foundation models, LLMs that we talked about, um, they require a, a, a data for, 
for customization. Um, they can pull for data for RAG. And with Ground Truth, you can have humans working on some of this more unstructured data and, and using that to prepare for LLM. So here we're sharing question and answer. You can also do the same thing uh, for image captioning as well. So, you know, here's a dog and a cat, or, you know, describe what's going on in a video, in a scene. You know, in this video scene, we have a person uh, jumping into, into water. So kind of really across the whole um, SageMaker portfolio, we've been working to enhance and help people who are building and training and deploying uh, their own LLMs. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, David from chat has a question about, I, I'll have to ask you to clarify a bit, David, because what you're asking is a very large topic, privacy <laughs> and AI. Uh, I think we're going to need a little more context to talk about that, but that's, that's, uh, you know, data privacy, data, uh, uh, you know, securing data, things like that. These are all foundational aspects of basically all AWS services, uh, not only just AI and ML services, but if you can give us a little bit more about what you mean there, David, uh, maybe we can, we can answer your question. Uh, cool. We are, we are, uh, almost out of time, Kimberly. Is there anything else that you want the, uh, the audience to take away? I know there's there, like I said, when we first started talking, there are a ton of things to explore in SageMaker. Uh, and these are some really great. I, I love the uh, the cheat sheet you said you had earlier. Yeah, I was going to pull up the helps. cheat sheet. Yeah, there's there's just, so two ways to think about it. Here's the cheat sheet and list of the features. And if I'd say there's one thing to take away, it's that we are focusing on training and deployment at scale. So um, having things like distributed training and different types of hosting options, uh, like async inference, real-time inference, serverless mm -hmm. inference, thinking about, and then, and then training how you can distribute your data and your models at scale to optimize the infrastructure that you're using. All of these things are gonna be increasingly important when you hit the world of building and training and deploying FM. So that's one thing to think about um, and that we're, we're working on. And the other cheat sheet is, as you mentioned, the SageMaker uh, portfolio of services is really growing and evolving to support you in your in the world of foundation models, whether you're a business analyst, data scientist, or ML engineers, we, we have those tools. And thank you for your patience with my audio, my videos, my demos seem to have uh, had some issues, but thank you for hanging in there. Oh, no worries. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it, Kimberly. Uh, absolutely. Um, and David, uh, I'm gonna drop a link in chat here. There's actually a, an FAQ. Uh, from Bedrock about security and privacy. So maybe that can answer some of your questions too. Uh, but yeah, I'll drop that in chat as well because we are unfortunately out of time, Kimberly. That, lots to go investigate when it comes yeah. to SageMaker. But thank you for joining us today, Kimberly. Yep, yeah, thank you everyone. Have a good Friday. All right.